Hey everybody, welcome to my garage. I have a computer repair project that I wanted to share with you guys. And we're gonna be repairing this computer. I'll get more into what is wrong with it and what it is in a minute. So let's get started. All right, so here's the computer that we're gonna be working on today. This computer, as you can tell by the badge, is made by Texas Instruments, the same company that makes your modern graphing calculator used in math class. So yeah, back in the day, Texas Instruments used to make fully-fledged computers for people to buy, and they obviously don't do that anymore, but they did make an entry into the personal computer market at one point. This computer is the model TI-99-4A, and this computer dates from around 1983, so it's pretty old. So let's take a look at what we have. So right here we have the main power switch for the computer, the keyboard, and then right here you have a cartridge slot. And you would be able to buy programs on cartridge for your TI computer, and you would insert those cartridges right there. Taking a look at the side, you have an expansion slot, but I don't have anything that fits into that slot at the moment. On the back of your computer, you have your main power connector. As you can see, it looks kind of odd because it's a proprietary TI connector. And then right here, you have a nine pin connector port. And I believe this is for a joystick. If you wanted to play games on your computer, you could hook up a joystick to that. And over on this side, you have your video out port, which is a five pin and they call it a DIN cable. And so that's where you would hook up to your monitor. And on the left side, you have another one of those nine pin connectors. So yeah, as you can see, this computer just by itself doesn't really have all that much. Now you could buy additional accessories for the computer like floppy disk drives or tape drives, and you could hook them up to the computer and use those for saving data from your programs or just loading programs off of disk and tape. I don't have any of those, so we're just stuck with the computer for right now. I do have a load of cartridges that we can use, and I've tested all these, and they do work. So now, let's get to what's wrong with the computer. So on my desk setup here, I have this little Polaroid TV that I use as a test monitor for anything that I need to test the video output on. So I've connected the DIN cable to the monitor, and I've hooked up the factory TI power supply to that power connector. So let's turn the computer on and see what happens. As you can see, the computer boots up, it says Texas Instruments Home Computer, it says press any key to begin. But watch what happens when I press any key. It does absolutely nothing. So that's the problem with this computer. The keyboard does not work at all. And it has been this way ever since I got the computer. And as you can imagine, I have taken this thing apart before and I have had the keyboard work very briefly sometimes. Like I could press a key, but it would come up with like six of the same character on the screen. It was very unreliable. This keyboard has never worked properly. But now as you can see, the keyboard just isn't working at all. I've had this keyboard apart many times. I've tried to repair it recently, but this keyboard I think is just totally gone. And I can show you why once I get the computer apart. So now you're probably wondering what my solution is to fix the keyboard. Well, after I tried repairing the keyboard it had and being unsuccessful, I realized pretty quickly that my only way to get the keyboard working is to just buy a new keyboard. So I went on eBay and I looked for ti 99 a replacement keyboards, and I had to make sure that it was the correct model keyboard because they made different variations of the 99 a that have different keyboards. In fact, I have one of those units and I'll show it to you. This computer is also a TI-994A. As you can see, it looks totally different. It's made out of metal on the silver part instead of a beige tan plastic like that one, but it's identical to the beige unit. This is actually an earlier version of the TI-994A. They tried to cut costs down, and what they came up with was the beige unit that we're gonna be fixing in this video. And so now you can see why I had to look for the correct keyboard because this one is black. The keys sound totally different, so they must have a little bit of a different switch mechanism underneath. I haven't taken this keyboard apart because it works. And I'm not sure about this, but I think the keyboard is also made by a different company, so I had to get the correct keyboard for the one that needed replacing. This machine also has a fault, but it's not keyboard related, and I will be fixing that at some point. 
but that will be for an entirely different video. So I went on eBay and started looking for replacement TI-994A keyboards. And the first listing I came across was someone selling two new old stock TI-99 keyboards of this exact model for only 40 bucks. So they've been sitting since the early 80s unused and they're super cheap. So I thought that's perfect. They're brand new. They've never been put inside one of these computers. They should work just fine. So I went ahead and ordered them. And here's one of them. And here's another. And from the looks of the eBay listing, it looks like the seller had quite a lot more of these at some point because it said like 10 items sold and there was two more. And the eBay seller's description said that these keyboards came from a bulk package. So obviously there was a box of these keyboards just sitting somewhere unused since the early 80s. I don't know how that's possible, but maybe this was just leftover stock that didn't end up getting used in a computer. But here they are. They've never been put in a computer. They've never seen power since the early 80s when they were tested at the factory. So what I'm gonna be doing is replacing the keyboard in this unit with one of these to see if it works. And just for the fun of it, I am gonna be testing both of the keyboards just so I know that they're working, okay? And even though these are brand new, never been used, there's still a possibility that these keyboards might not work. These keyboards are known to be flaky, like my original keyboard. And so in the seller's description, it said, buy at your own risk. I'm including two keyboards because you might not get a working keyboard if you just buy one, so I'm including two. Let's go ahead and get the system apart and we can take a look inside. All right, so here we are at the back of the computer. First thing we have to do is take the back cover off. There's three screws here and four more in the front. Okay, and after those are removed, the back cover just lifts right off. And so here is our first look inside the TI-994A. This right here is the main power supply board. It is exposed, so you wanna be careful not to touch anything that's high voltage on this board because this is where the main power is at. The keyboard is under this little shield and then the motherboard of the computer is under this bigger shield. This cable right here is coming from the power supply board. It comes through here and it goes to the power jack for the power adapter, and that just lifts out. It is held down by tape right here. Now this can just come out and sit right there. And to take the power supply board out, there are two screws here, and then I have to remove a connector that's on the other side of the board. And now it should be free. So now the next thing is to remove the little keyboard shield with those two screws. And you can put your fingers under here and slide it out like that. And I could have also removed these two screws, but I kind of want the keyboard to stay where it is right now because I have to remove the motherboard first to disconnect this cable that's going from the keyboard to the motherboard. And so to remove this entire thing, motherboard and shield, screw one, screw two, uh, screw three. So I have to remove those. So like I said before, this comes totally out. I do have to remove this cable, so I kind of have to work at it from this side first. And once it gets to about that point, I can go in and... Why is the cable not attached? You guys could probably see it from your angle. Did I forget to attach the cable when I was in this thing last? <laughs> I wasn't in this thing too long ago. Maybe I forgot to attach the cable, but yeah, this is the motherboard. The cable would have been attached right here on this little pin header and about the motherboard. So when I got this computer, it did not come with its uh, external power brick. I had to buy that separately. And this motherboard could have had any range of faults on it. Maybe the video display processor was bad. The chip that handles the video, which is this one under the metal heatsink there, there could have been a memory problem with these RAM chips here. The CPU could have been dead. These 80s computers generally have some faults as they age, but no, this one, the motherboard is totally perfect. It's just a keyboard problem. I'm pretty lucky that I got a working motherboard out of this system. And now I can remove these two screws to fully take apart the keyboard. And then this just lifts right out. It should, there we go, just a little bit stuck. So here's the original keyboard from the computer. And if we take a look at the back side, you can see there are 
a bunch of little screws that hold it together. But if I were to remove all those, this little brown part of the keyboard, this is the main circuit board, that would come off. And underneath that, you would find a little plastic sheet called a membrane. And the membrane has little contacts on it that when you press a key, it will press down against the membrane, which pushes down on a little copper contact on the circuit board itself. And that lets the computer know, oh, this key was just pressed. And so that's how it would know to put that character on the screen. So when I first took apart this keyboard, I found that the membrane was stuck completely onto the circuit board. And I believe what should happen is that the membrane should be loose once you get the circuit board off. So then you can just take the membrane away. But obviously because this keyboard's been used, that membrane was totally stuck down to the circuit board. And when I eventually was able to remove it, I heated it up a little bit so I could get it a little less sticky. What happened was there's a set of main contacts kind of around this area that the membrane has to touch on the circuit board. And those just ripped right off the membrane. So the middle part of the contacts were no longer there. They stuck to the actual circuit board. And so no matter what I did with the membrane to try to get those contacts to be functional again, it, it just wouldn't work. I think the membrane in there is totally shot and there's not really much I can do to get the membrane in this keyboard to work again. So let's take this keyboard away and take a look at one of the new keyboards. So there's the first one. Let's take our first keyboard out of the bag and take a look at it. Yeah, that definitely does not look used. I mean, not that my original, my original keyboard is actually in really good condition. Let's compare. The original one is a little dirty. It's got a little bit of dust underneath the keys, but this one does look better. sounds exactly the same, so that's one indication that it's the exact same keyboard. Oh yeah, I can tell that cable has never once been used. Look how it's like just tucked in at the bottom in the original one because it's obviously been used in that computer. It's all the way out, so yeah. And I'm not going to be taking this keyboard apart. I'm going to be putting it directly into the motherboard and testing it. So let's see what we got. All right, here's the moment of truth. Let's turn it on. Thumbs up, let's see what happens. Hey, it worked, we got past it. Press one for TI Basic, so I'll hit one. Let's just test all of the keys and make sure they work. There's one, two, three. Oh, number three is not working. Neither is four, five is. Six is a little flaky. Seven is going okay, eight. Okay, so this one is a little flaky. I honestly expected that. This is pretty much how my other keyboard was working. So yeah, this one definitely needs a bit of work. Yeah, it's got some problems. I'll have to take this one apart and look at it. But it's a step farther than what we were with the other keyboard. So I'm gonna try the other keyboard. So yeah, this one definitely looks brand new as well. The cable is face down just like the other one so that has never been lifted. Go ahead and pull that out. It is, <laughs> it's just as tight as the other one. Go ahead and hook this up to that pin header and let's see what's up with keyboard number two. Oh this one is flaky as well. It somewhat works though. One, two, two doesn't work. <laughs> Oh gosh, okay, so yeah, this one might be even a little bit worse than the first one. Yeah, this one is also... not really working. Yeah, that's how that went. <laughs> Got two keyboards that are flaky, but all hope is not lost because since these are new, the membranes should be totally fine in these things. So I'm gonna go ahead and take one of them apart and see what I can do to get it working better. So now that I have no choice but to take one of these keyboards apart, 
I can show you what I mean by the whole membrane and circuit board situation. So what I'll have to do is remove all of those tiny little screws to get the circuit board free. <sighs> okay, that's done. And so now what I have to do is turn on my little soldering station here and I have to desolder these two points right there so I can desolder the shift lock key. All right, there we go, those have been desoldered. So now I should be able to lift the bottom part of the circuit board off and the membrane is the first thing I wanna take a look at. So there's the underneath of the keyboard where the bottom sides of the keys are. Here's the circuit board with the membrane on it. And I can tell you right now that the contacts on this membrane are actually good. So let me show you. So there's where the keys touch the membrane at on those dots, and then those dots will make contact with a copper contact underneath the membrane on the circuit board itself. These little lines right here, those are the main contacts of the membrane that went bad on my other one. The middle parts of them were just, they just totally ripped off the membrane when I first took it off. So I'm not gonna repeat the same mistake I made when taking off the other membrane for the first time, was that I didn't heat it up. I heated it up every other time after that when I needed to take it off, but not the first time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat up the membrane with my heat gun at a very low temperature. I'm obviously not gonna melt it, but I am gonna heat it up enough so I can take the membrane off easily. And then I'm going to probably just clean the circuit board and the bottom of the membrane, and that should restore the keyboard to a usable state. So let's dig in. So while I was trying to heat up the membrane, I noticed it was very hard to remove. Even when I increased the temperature of the heat gun a little bit, it was very hard to actually get the membrane to start coming off. So I decided maybe I should just heat up the entire membrane instead, or at least the area where these contacts touch. And so I did that, and now look what happens when I press on these contacts. It works. And I just went through two rows of keys and keep in mind this is only working because those contacts are against the circuit board right now and it's working might be a, a little bit of flakiness still left but look at how reliable that is i'm doing the entire top row numbers and every single one works q w e r t y u i o I didn't hit it right. O, P, slash. It's working. <laughs> that fixed it. So now what I'm going to do is put the top part of the keyboard back on. I'll put a few screws in, and then we can test it with actually pushing on the keys. Okay, I went ahead and put some of the screws in, so it's got enough support to actually work. So let's take a look. There we go. Hmm. Now it isn't working. Now it's back to flaky. Maybe I need to give those uh, contacts another clean, or at least the ones on the actual keys themselves. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to give it a little bit more of a clean. Okay, I went and heated that membrane again at a much higher temperature, so let's see what happens now. Oh, that is way more promising. Like, I didn't even have to push the key all the way down for it to work. This, oops. Okay, space is working. I'm gonna backspace all of that and try one more time. This is a test of the key. Did I hit the H? I must have. Keyboard after heating it at a much higher. I can't spell. Temperature. No typos. Look at that. It's actually working. Let's go ahead and just test all the keys real fast. Yeah, every single key worked. So that's the, that's the fix. 
when these keyboards are flaky, you just have to take them apart, heat up the membrane. I heated it at 150 degrees Celsius. I tried it on a corner of the membrane where there weren't any contacts just to see if it was, if that was an okay temperature to do it and it didn't harm the membrane at all. So I went through and just slowly worked my way through the membrane with the heat gun about maybe a centimeter or less away from it. At 150 degrees Celsius, I went through and did the whole thing and that made it reliable. So that's fantastic. So I'll have to go through and do that same process to the other keyboard and we'll see if we can get that one fixed. Just to give you guys a refresher about keyboard number two, this is it right here hooked up. I just tried to type the word this and only H came out. So I'm going to try to type the phrase this is a test of the keyboard and let's see what happens. And that's what we got. That doesn't sound like a sentence. Let's fix it so it can be a sentence. All right, and the outcome is, seems good. Mm, might have been a little bit flaky still. Let's just try again. T is a bit flaky still. This is a test of the keyboard after heating it once. That is much better. Seems like it's working. This is another test of keyboard 2 after heating it up a second time. And there you go. Keyboard number 2 is fixed. I honestly can't, apostrophe is function O, I honestly can't believe that the fix for these keyboards was so simple. That's amazing how simple it really was. So there you have it, two keyboards that were delivered totally flaky, now been restored to a fully usable state. So now the next thing is to take one of the keyboards, put it into the TI, put it back together, and we'll do a final typing test. Okay, here we go. The computer is back together again. So let's go ahead and turn it on and do a final test. Looking good. The computer is back. Oops. I hit a bunch of letters at once together with a new old stock keyboard that works perfectly after I fixed it. So yeah, this computer works 100% now and that's awesome. This thing has never had a reliable keyboard in it before. And now it does. So. That is the TI-994A repair. So there you guys have it. We took a TI-994A that had zero working keys, and now it has all working keys. So yeah, that's all I have for now. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more computer-related videos.